Hello, everyone. So we're going to move into the section one, unit two. Uh, so now in this is where that we're going to start about the uh, discussion about electric circuit and electric current, uh, electric resistance, and how we're going to analyze electric circuits uh, by using the uh, knowledge that the background we build up uh, so far. So that means in unit one, you remember that we start with electric force and then we discuss about electric field and then we move into the electric uh, potential. So then we discuss electric potential energy and also uh, electric potential difference, right? Uh, additionally, we discuss about little bit about how series and parallel uh, capacitors will work and also uh, charging and discharging capacitors a little bit. But we're going to move into the whole uh, circuits that include uh, resistors, light bulbs, capacitors, and those things uh, to Together after the discussion of um, electric current in uh, this uh, section. So now uh, we already know that in every uh, day in our life, uh, so we are working with electric devices. Uh, so mainly, uh, you know, that the semiconductor chips we always use inside your computer and uh, the, that will uh, carry the uh, electric current and human cells, you know, that will carry the current and all the conductors carry the current, right? So, but uh, so far in your unit one, uh, we discuss about the conductors and we call it that conductor has a constant potential and electric potential. That means there is no potential difference on the conductor because of that electric field on the conductor is uh, zero. Right. So now uh, the question coming up in here. Uh, so now if the conductor does not have uh, electric field, how are we going to move particle from one place to another place uh, through the conductor? How are we going to push the charges through the conductor if this does not have electric field? That's what we so far learned, right? So now this electric field, uh, we can create by using external source. That is what we call it as the uh, power supply or the battery that will basically uh, create an electric potential in between these two terminals of the conductor. That means it has basically electric field. Then I can move the charges uh, inside the conductor. When, the, when there is the charge moving on the conductor that we call it as the electric uh, current. Right, so that's the part that we're going to discuss now. Electric current is basically moving of positive charges. That's we're going to define as it is. But you remember that in your unit one, I never discuss about the moving of source charges. Everything that we discuss is I have a source charge, I have a test charge. Test charge is the one you can move everywhere and find it out the potential electric field or uh, force on that particle. We keep the uh, source charge fixed. Now we're going to keep moving the charges, keep moving the charges, we basically call it as the electric uh, current. Okay, so now uh, in this uh, chapter in your textbook uh, will be chapter uh, 20. I'm going to share the video first. So we're going to talk about the uh, chapter 20. Uh, that will be the uh, part that we're going to cover in this uh, section. Okay. So now let me share the presentation. Okay, so now let's see electric current. So as I mentioned, I have the conductor in the A picture, uh, but there is no current going through the conductor because it does not have any uh, power supply to move the current. So now what will happen is if I connect circuit to the power supply as you have it in B uh, diagram, then what happen is your current is going to uh, pass through the loop. So I have a potential difference and I have a closed loop, then there will be a current. So now to have a current on the circuit, there should be a potential difference that will apply it by using power supply. And also there should be a, a closed loop. That means the loop that I have 
cannot have a broken loop, should be a closed loop, then it will carry the current. So current is, uh, current is the, the direction of the current will be the direction of the positive charges. That means positive charges moving in this direction, then that will be the conventional direction of the current. So negative charges will move in opposite direction. Right. So usually negative charges are the charges who is moving. So now opposite direction of negative charge motion, we call it as the direction of the current. But what is the current is? Current, current is defined as charges that we can pump per unit time. Charges per unit time, we call it as the current. Right. So now charges we're going to measure by using coulombs and time we're going to measure by using second. This coulomb over second unit, we call it as amperes, amps. Right. That this is a unit of the uh, current. Okay. So now by conventionally current direction uh, will be the direction of the positive charge motion. So usually positive charges will be the uh, charges that move from high voltage to low voltage. That's that's why the, we use it as the conventional direction of the current because our negative charges will move from negative to a positive voltage. Okay, so now again here also you will see current direction will be the same as the uh, proton direction and current direction will be opposite to the electron direction. Okay, and also your electric field will be the same direction as the current as we already know. So now electric current is something that you can say charge per unit time, but we know about the charges. Charges are conserved quantity. That means you cannot create or destroy the charges because of that you cannot create or destroy the current. That's because of the charge conservation. So now this is another way mentioning about the charge conservation by using electric current. So now if I have a current we'll call this as a junction, right? The rule that I'm going to talk in here, actually junction rule, we will come back to that in your next uh, lecture, very detailed, but here we just going to use the conservation of uh, charge uh, to just to get an understanding how this current distributed, right? So this is the junction. So ju junction, you see that this current coming into the junction, that is into the junction, but this current going out and this current going out. So now I1 and I2 going out, I0 incoming current. So now according to the conservation of charge, your total current will be equal to the uh, outgoing and incoming currents will be the same. Okay, so now it is the true uh, for any shape of the wires, bending wires or circular wires, it will be still the uh, same, right? So now I have a, a puzzle here that we're going to solve um, because I want you to uh, know how to work with junction rule a little more. And now it is asking me what is the current I in this branch of the wire. So now it is very important that you start from somewhere, but you need to make sure that you have only one unknown of the current to that junction. Then you can find that and then keep going throughout the loop until you solve the puzzle. Okay, so now since I need to find the I, I know that uh, best way I can start may be this junction, right? Or else this junction. Right. These are the two junctions that you can start because other wires I have unknown currents. Right. So let's move into the junction number uh, red that I label as junction number one. So now in this junction, you will see 2A incoming. You need to think about the junction. You stay on the junction. This 2A coming into the junction. This 3A coming into the junction. Right. So now uh, this 2A and 3A are five, those both are incoming current. That means I should have outgoing current as five in this wire. That is outgoing for that junction, okay? So now let's move into the uh, another junction. Now next junction I can move definitely will be this one, okay? So if I move to this junction, you definitely can see one A is outgoing and two A also outgoing, that means to that green junction, I should have three A incoming current, incoming towards the junction, incoming towards the junction, that number should be three, okay? So now we can uh, move to the 
next junction we'll say i'm going to move into this one now so now this junction you will see three going out five incoming that means the junction i have the wire that i have bottom direction that should have a current but that should be outgoing to okay outgoing from that junction that is two okay so five minus three will be two so now you can move into the next junction so now next junction is here so in this junction you know that 4a is incoming and also two that i found earlier is also incoming that means this junction has six outgoing six outgoing okay so now i am ready to go to the uh, finding my unknown value by using this junction so now I have 2A incoming, 6A incoming. That means this should be outgoing, how much? 8. Okay. So now your final answer will be 8A to the right. 8A to the right. Okay. That's a puzzle that you can uh, build up your own and do it. Or, and also we have one more example in your uh, recitation worksheet. Okay, so now current and drift uh, speed. So now we know that the charges are moving on wire, cylindrical shape wire, and charges are moving. Those are positive charges. When you take the cross-sectional area of that cylinder, we call it as A. And also we'll say that there is a number of charges that uh, carry per unit volume. I'm going to say N. Number of charges carry per unit volume will be A. So n. So now if you times the n times a and if you times the uh, delta x amount, that will say this small amount is delta x, then if you times the delta x times n times a, that we can call it as the total number of charge carriers in that segment. Total number of charge carriers in that segment. So now how do you know that the current is the one that we are talking about current we know that it is delta q divided by delta t i'm going to explain how to find this current by using how to find this uh, delta q by using the drift velocity and this cross-sectional area and number of carriers right so now now we know that n a delta x that i calculated is the total number of charge carriers in a segment. So now total charge is the number of carriers times the charge per carrier, right? Number of carriers time number of uh, carriers times the charge per carrier. We call it as the total charge. That will be the delta Q. We need to times the Q value, charge of the carrier. Okay. So now this is delta Q. So now what we're going to do, okay, so I have the equation I, I'm going to plug the delta Q that has A, Q, and I'm going to write delta X outside and divide by delta T from here to here. And then this part, we know that change of rate of uh, segment or the displacement, we call it as the velocity. So now if I replace this with the velocity, I will be able to write N, A, Q, and V. This velocity, we call it as the drift velocity. Drift velocity is basically average velocity of the carrier. Okay? So that's how we combine the current uh, to the drift velocity. But it's very important to think that you think the direction of those things. You see that the drift velocity, uh, electric field, and also current, will be the same direction. They are in the same direction. That will be the positive charge motion of the direction. So that is the all of those directions. Okay, so now next item we're going to discuss is the current density. So current density is sometimes very useful because current per unit area, we call it as the current density. If you have a different areas, that means if you calculate the current, will be the same, but current density will be going to be different if you have different cross-sectional area. So if I have a thick wire, if you have thin wire, different is the cross-section. Because of that, although they have the same current, they have different current density. So that's what it means. So current density is current per unit area. So now we can know that the density, current density units is 
amperes divided by the cross sectional area meter square that's the unit right so now by connecting that what we wrote earlier we will be able to derive this equation easily so that means the current density is directionally proportional directly proportional to the uh, electric field that proportional constant i have here we call it as conductivity of the material conductivity conductivity Right. That means if it is a conductor, conductivity is higher, right? So if it is an insulator, there is no conductivity, it's almost zero conductivity, that kind of uh, constant. Okay. So now let's move into the uh, resistance and resistors. Resistance and resistor are two different words. Resistor is a device uh, that can uh, carry the energy. That can be a light bulb, it can be a, a heater, uh, anything that you as your electrical device is a resistor that's the device right and then uh, resistance is the basically a value that will uh, give you a resistance or resistance to the motion of the charges so that is called it as the resistance Okay, resist the current, the value that resists the current, we call it as the resistance. So now resistance, we're going to measure it by using ohms. Ohm is the scientist's name. So that's the symbol or the SI unit for the uh, resistance. Okay. Okay, so now uh, credits go to the different scientists. As you already know, Thomas Alva Edison has found the uh, first electric light bulb and also he found many other devices and uh, Walter is another scientist uh, who invented uh, the first electric battery and also Ohms as we already discussed the Ohm so Ohm is the scientist that is start to define the resistance and get the units of the resistance and also uh, relation between velocity and current to the resistance okay so now next word is resistance and resistivity. So resistance we're discussing here, right? But resistivity is something different. So now uh, resistivity is actually call it as the ratio to electric field over current density. Resistivity, uh, electric field over current density. And remember that we discussed this uh, earlier. That means one over resistivity will be equal to the conductivity we call because sometimes people call it as the resistivity sometimes people using the conductivity so conductor has a uh, value resistivity a very small value conductivity is larger value so insulator has a larger resistivity that has the uh, less conductivity value so that's the uh, definition of the uh, resistivity and the conductivity but now, here is the uh, thing that we're going to discuss. So now, uh, the current and the voltage are related to each other. That relation or the ratio to voltage to current, this is actually Ohm's law. Ratio of voltage to current, we call it as the resistance. That's resistance. So now you can see volt over amperes. This is what I called it as Ohm's earlier, Ohm's. Okay? Volt over amps. So now that's the resistance, but you see that in resistance, there is no resistivity uh, inside, right? That means R is something that a ratio that you are not able to change. That means resistance of the resistor is manufactured value that we are not able to uh, uh, adjust it. We are not able to change it, right? It is the ratio of voltage to current. So now how you change the R? Change in R will be uh, basically changing of the material or changing of the length of the material or changing of the cross-sectional area of the material. So now that is defined as rho L over A. Rho is resistivity as we discussed. That's basically material property and L is the length of the cylinder and A will be this cross-sectional area of the cylinder. Then you see that when A is greater, your resistance is 
going to be lower. When the length is greater, you have a larger resistor. That's how the manufacture value getting from the resistor. That's the manufacturing procedure that they need to do to uh, get the resistor that we need. Okay. So now uh, this resistivity is actually have the connection to the temperature. So you see that in here, this is the uh, temperature at, uh, we can say reference temperatures, most of the time it will be zero degrees or sometime it will take it at 20 degrees. So that will be the resistivity at reference point. And then resistivity at some temperature will be able to calculate by using this formula. Okay, so now uh, alpha is we call it as the uh, uh, constant that has the uh, that is call it as the uh, expansion coefficient or coefficient of temperature uh, resistivity or we can say temperature coefficient of resistivity. So that's the best word. Temperature coefficient of resistivity is the alpha. So now since we definitely know R and rho are proportional to each other. If I want, I will be able to write this by using R also. R, R naught equal R naught alpha T minus T naught. This equation also valid. Okay. So, but this is not always working for all the uh, current carrying wires. Sometimes this has some fluctuation. This is not always true. This is for conductors most of the time. It will be closely follow this uh, formula. Okay. So now, uh, now uh, resistance that you're going to see it in your uh, lab has a kind of color code. Those color codes will represent basically the value of the resistance. Although we are not going to read this in your class or the lab, I think it is better to have a knowledge on this. Okay, so now uh, we we can measure this by using multimeters inside the laboratory, but we're going to uh, check that if we can read the colors. So usually resistors, you have four band code, that means you basically have four colors or you have five band codes, right? So you're going to start from the closest one first to the this side. And then if it is four band, you're going to read band number first, second, and then the multiply. You will read these three for four band code. Okay, so now we'll see how we read it. So now I have green. So you go to the first band and see the green is five, right? The five. And then you go to the second color, blue. Go and second band is six. And then third is multiplier. Third is the yellow color. Then I have multiplier 10 kilo ohm. Right. Last one is tolerance that we uh, we are not going to talk it. That's the manufacturing uh, uncertainty that we have. So now this answer will be 560 kilo ohm. That's the value of the resistance as you can see it in here. That is for how to read the four band code. But if you have five band code, you're going to go to the first color that will be red two in this case. And then you go to the second color that seems to me orange and then three and then third color will be the third band in here so that will be purple that will go to the seven and then fourth one will be the black multiplier so black is one so then multiply by one that will give you three seven ohms smaller than the value that i had in a four band code okay, that's how we can read the uh, resistance by using color codes okay Okay, so we're going to move into the Ohm's law. So Ohm's is the scientist that, as we discussed, Ohm basically defined the resistance. Resistance is voltage to current ratio. So R is voltage to current ratio. What that means? What that means is if I draw a current as a function of potential, then you're going to see the uh, linear curve because you have, we see that we, uh, your current is y-axis, we equal i and r. So this is your y-axis, this is your x-axis. Then your slope will be, oh, I did the opposite, I'm sorry. So we have the opposite curve in here. So you can do uh, both way if you want, but this is not the what I have it in here. Uh, so we're going to, we're going to get the uh, potential difference in x-axis. So that means I have, uh, 
I have I in Y axis, I equal one over R and B. So that means this is my X axis. This is my Y axis. That means you can take the slope and reciprocal of that will give you the one over R value. Important thing is V and I plot will be a linear plot if it follow the Ohm's law, many of the resistors. But we may have some light bulbs that not following this Ohm's law. Those material we call it as non-ohmic material. Here you see that the diode does not follow. So non-ohmic, non-ohmic means does not follow the Ohm's law. does not follow Ohm's law we equal IR is the Ohm's law, right? Ohmic material means the devices that follow the Ohm's law. Okay. We're going to observe these both uh, of devices in your laboratory. Okay, so now semiconductor and superconductors are some other devices. Semiconductor is basically you can make it conduct uh, by uh, increasing uh, temperature, or by exposing to something, we can make it conduct. A semiconductor is a conductor in between conductor and the insulator that we can have the uh, electricity pass through. And superconductor is the material that have uh, some region that means very low temperature, there is no resistance. That's why we call it as the superconductor, right? But you can have a take a look how the resistance change with the uh, non conducting materials and the superconductor. You see that in the superconductor, you have zero resistance in this region, zero resistance, very low temperature, superconductors, right? In research level uh, materials. And non-superconductor metals, you usually have this behavior with the uh, temperature. And also semiconductors uh, conductivity or the resistance will be in other way. You see it's going down in this way because of the uh, property of the uh, semiconductors that we have, uh, PN junction and those things. Okay. Uh, to get an understanding, those are different materials that uh, we are using in our uh, techn technological applications. Okay. And uh, last item I need to talk is the power. So power is defined as similar to your uh, 116 class. Power is defined as work done per unit time, right? Power is basically work done per unit time or rate of change of work done, we call it as the power. So now we know that the work done per unit charge, we call it as the <coughs> work done for the unit charge, we call it as the Work done for the unit charge, we call it as the uh, uh, voltage, right? So by doing this calculation, I will, by proving this into here, I can write the power equal I times V. I is the current and V is the voltage, right? So now what I can do is, you know that the V equal I R by using the Ohm's law, then I can plug this into here I can rewrite this equation by using resistance if I want, resistance, and by using voltage and resistance uh, in addition to I and V, right? That means these three equations basically give you the uh, electrical energy transfer rate, or we call it as the electric uh, power, okay? So now uh, let's move into the next one. Okay, so now uh, electric power uh, that you pay in for the uh, energy bill, right? So do you pay for the uh, energy or do you pay for the power, right? So you need to think that by using the units, you uh, your electric meter that you uh, use in for your home will count kilowatts hour kilowatts hour. Kilowatts is the power, right? This part is the power because measuring by watts power, right? And the hour is the time. So you are paying for power times time. What is the power times time is? That will be basically energy, right? Because power is work done or the energy divided by time. That means you are basically paying for the energy that, in, that can be converted into joules one K 
kilowatts hour is equal to 3.6 times 10 to the power 6 joule right so now electricity at home we have complex circuit uh, we have a lot of wires and uh, there are uh, circuit breakers uh, that we can basically uh, uh, use uh, our devices safely because a circuit breaker is is a fuse that it will uh, break down when something happened in happen in your uh, home circuit right that will save your uh, uh, devices inside the home so those are uh, there's a fuse that we have it on electric uh, power board you have it in your home. So now we're going to move into the uh, alternating current and the DC current, right? So DC current means direct current, direct current, right? Direct current means if you measure the current with the time, that will be just a same constant current throughout the uh, time interval. So that call it as the DC current. Right. So now AC current means if you measure the current as a function of time, that's going to be kind of sinusoidal wave. That means I have positive current, I have negative current, right? It keeps changing uh, for uh, different time interval according to the frequency or the voltage that we are getting to the home. So now there are uh, usage of DC and there are usage of AC. DC current usually used for your charging of your computers, laptops, and uh, phone charges. This all uh, we use in DC current because we don't want the fluctuation of the uh, uh, is the current, right? But AC current is useful sometimes for the motors uh, or the heater because we need to rotate the motor back and forth that we can do by switching the direction of the current easily because of that usually uh, those uh, motors that we have it on the devices we use the uh, ac uh, current right but uh, we know that the ac voltage you see that voltage or the current both are changing as a sinusoidal wave right so v naught is this maximum peak that call as the amplitude, that's the V naught is, and sine omega is the angular frequency and time is the time. So that will be your sinusoidal wave. It is same also for the current, okay? So now alternating current, that when you go to the uh, your classroom or the laboratory, you are going to measure the value by using the voltmeter. That measurement, if you do for the AC voltage, it will not give you the AC voltage you want. What it gives you is the VRMS value. VRMS value means um, root mean squared value, root mean squared value. I also IRMS. Your multimeter will give you IRMS and VRMS if you measure for the AC current. DC current, it's not a problem. DC current, it will give you DC voltage and the DC current. But when you measure the AC voltage and AC current, you need to do some calculation to find uh, your maximum value of the voltage, okay? So if you need to find the uh, power, then power, average power, you need to take the VRMS time IRMS, not just V and I. Then you can see if you plug IRMS and VRMS values, then you're going to get half of the I naught and V naught. What that means, this is the maximum power, this is the minimum power, then you are going to stay as your average value in middle. That is the half times I naught V, right? So this V naught in the V naught curve, so if you have the curve like that, this is what the V naught is. Here it is the zero, right? So now V naught divided by root two is the VRMS value that your voltmeter read. These two are connected each other by using this uh, root two number, okay? Okay, so electric hazard and human uh, body. So we know that there are uh, two known hazards of the electricity. Uh, one is the thermal hazard and the other one is the electric uh, shock. So now thermal hazard is one, uh, the uh, most of the time the electric power uh, do the thermal effect, such as probably fire because of the electric leakage, that kind of things or short circuit right? That kind of things will create the thermal hazard. So that will be dangerous because it can create a 
fire uh, finally right and shock hazard is basically uh, human touch the electricity so this one is actually not like very uh, harmful or uh, it is it is like uh, uh, it is a severe pain uh, but it is harmless right so how are you going to touch the electricity so don't ever touch the electricity because always you are grounded grounded means there is a connection between you and the ground to the electricity. Simple example, if you're going to touch the electricity in here, then there is a chance that electricity can go through your body to the ground, right? But if you can fly uh, without touching the ground, you will be safe, nothing happened to you, right? So, but uh, anyway, so anywhere that when you touch it, if you ground it, you should not touch the electricity at all. You need to find the insulating table or something, then you can work with the electricity, okay? So otherwise electricity will travel through the body, then you're going to get a severe pain uh, because of this electric uh, shock. Okay, so that will be the uh, end of the chapter.